Hello everyone, I'm that tech guy. Linux Mint 18 is one of my favorite Linux distributions, and they recently released into beta 18.2, codenamed Sonya. Today, I'd like to show you how you can virtualize Linux Mint on top of Windows 10, and we're going to use a tool called VirtualBox. Virtualization is great because it allows you to run multiple operating systems on top of your existing host operating system, and there's some benefits to that. So today we'll take a look at that, and we'll see how simple it is to set up, and we'll have a little fun. So to get started with virtualization, um, there are two main programs that you can use to virtualize. The first one is VirtualBox, which is the one we'll be using today in this tutorial, and the other one is VMware Player. They offer a free version, their VM Workstation Player, and it's quite good, and I recommend using that one if you're wanting to pass through a dedicated graphics card. But for all other intents and purposes, VirtualBox is, works just as good as VMware Player. Um, they both have their pros and cons, and they're both very simple to set up. So to get started, if you have not done so already, you'll need to download the VirtualBox application. And you can do that from their website. Simply just go to Google and type in VirtualBox. It'll be the first one that comes up. Click on the link here. Since I'm running off a Windows 10 host, I want to click that one, but as you see, they also have it for Mac OS and for Linux distributions. So depending on what you're hosting off of, click accordingly. Since we're doing Windows, we'll click that one, save it to the location of your choice, and run through the installer. It's very, very straightforward. Once you run through that, you'll have the VirtualBox application. And it should look like this. So. What we want to do is, since we're virtualizing Linux Mint, again, if you have not done so already, you'll want a Linux Mint ISO. The most recent version is Linux Mint 18.1, codenamed Serena, and they have several desktop environments available. You have Cinnamon, you have Mate, XFCE, and KDE. I personally like Cinnamon the best, although Mate, in my opinion, is really good as well. Perfect for older hardware, especially. Uh, so click on the one you want, and choose whether you're going to run 32-bit or 64-bit. Most modern computers within the last 15 or so years will be running off 64-bit, and you should be 64-bit capable. So choose that accordingly. and. For this tutorial, I'm actually going to be using the beta version of Linux Mint 18.2, which is due for final release at the end of June 2017. So if you want to run that one, you just click on download and navigate to all versions. And you'll see here they have listed the beta version for Sonya. And again, click on the one you want, the version you want choose a mirror to download from. Typically you want to choose a mirror that is closest to your home location for a faster download and then save it to the location of your choice. Once you've done all that, open up VirtualBox and it should look something like this. And the first thing we want to do is click this icon up here that says new. Give your virtual machine a name. I'll call mine Linux Mint. And because it recognizes as Linux, it went ahead and set the type accordingly and the version. Now if you downloaded the 32-bit ISO, you'll want to choose 32-bit here. This is really important. If you choose the wrong one, you will not be able to boot into your virtual machine. So just be aware of that. And also keep in mind that Linux Mint is based off of Ubuntu so here you'll want to choose the Ubuntu listing. Once you've done that, click Next, and we'll be presented with an option to allocate memory. Um, 
depending on how much memory your system has, determines how much or how little you can allocate to it. I have 16 gigs on this machine. Uh, Linux Mint does not require a ton of memory. It's very resource friendly and not a heavy system. So you could do fine with one gigabyte if you truly wanted to. Um, I want mine to be a little faster, so I'm going to give mine about half, give or take. I'm going to stick it right there. Click Next. And here you can choose what type of hard drive you want. Uh, this is where you'll save all your applications, where you'll install the virtual machine if you choose to, if you choose to do so. Another option with Linux, of course, is you can boot into the live environment. You can do that in VirtualBox. It runs just like booting it off a USB on a computer. Uh, so you can do that if you want to. Uh, but if you if you choose to, you can install it normally and have a full a fully functioning hard drive. And this is where we'll choose to do that if we want. I per I personally prefer doing the virtual hard disk. Uh, if you choose not to add one, you can. And if you want to use an existing partition, an existing typically a VDI file, you can choose that as well. That's a little more advanced than this tutorial, um, so we won't be doing that in this video. So for now I'm going to create a virtual hard disk and I'm going to stick with the VDI which stands for virtual box disk image. And I like mine to be a fixed size. If you choose a dynamically allocated it will grow as you add things to it although it will not shrink so once you add to it and it grows and keeps expanding it will never get any smaller. So I'm going to stick with the fixed size and I'm going to give mine about 20 gigabytes not 120, 20. Okay. And depending on how much space again you have on your system you can choose as you wish. I recommend with Linux Mint that you give it at least 10 gigabytes that's enough space to boot into the live ISO. I'm not sure if they've upped their requirements. Last I had checked, Linux Mint's requirements for an install was eight gigs. I've not, I'm not sure if that's upped any. Um, so you, if you do 10, you may not be able to fully install it on a virtual machine, but you will be able to boot into a live ISO environment and play around with it, play with the settings and power it off and then power it on again as much as you want into that live environment. So if that's all you wish to do, stick with a minimum of 10 gigs and of course if you want to do more with it, if you want to actually store files on it, if you want to put pictures, documents, movies, music, or whatnot, if you want to install the system as well, give it more accordingly. So choose that. I'm going to stick with 20 gigs for, for now because I'm going to do a basic install and I'm not planning to put a whole lot of stuff onto it just going to kind of play around with it. And then click create. And as we see it's going to take about 30, 40 seconds here. Okay, now that this is ready, we're not quite set to hit the start button yet. We do need we do need to adjust some settings. So we'll go ahead and click that while Linux Mint is highlighted. We just want to run through these and make sure everything checks out. So for our base memory, I've given about half of my memory. For processors, I have eight CPUs on here. I'm going to give it four, make it a little faster. Display. Slide the video memory as far to the right as you can. Monitor count, we'll leave that. Enable 3D and enable 2D. For storage, highlight the empty disk. Click on this disk icon right here. Choose virtual optical disk file. Click on that. And then navigate to wherever you downloaded the Linux Mint ISO. And then open it. And that's all the settings we're going to adjust. So you can close out. With this highlighted, click start. Give it just a moment and Linux Mint will fire up. See it starting the virtual machine. And hit capture. Alright, so this is just as if you had taken a 
ISO burned to a flash drive, plugged it into your computer, rebooted into the ISO. This is a screen you'll see, uh, so we want to click Start Linux Mint. And if you don't press anything, it should start automatically as well. And we'll just go ahead and resize it here. So here we are booted into our Linux Mint. Again, I'm using 18.2, the beta version of, of Sanyo. And as we can see, we're still running on top of Windows 10. And everything seems to be checking out. I can click inside the desktop, or I can click outside on my Windows install. It's all very seamless. One of the new features that I'm really excited about with this new version of Cinnamon on 18.2 is the corner snapping. So if we come up here, we can snap to the corners. Previously, you could only do left and right snapping. So I'm really, really excited about that. Another feature that, I'm, that I enjoy is the new theming options. So if we click themes, we have the old Mint X themes, but they now include the new Mint Y themes as well, which gives it a more modern look. Now, of course, typically I, I usually roll with the orange cello or the arc or the Numix themes, so I don't usually stick with these defaults, but this is a huge improvement over, over the old X themes, if nothing else. Um, and in my opinion, it just looks 100 times better. It gives it a very crisp, clean feel to it. And that's it. Of course, you have, for those not familiar with Linux Mint, um, the best way I can describe it is it has a very Windows 7-like feel to it. Uh, it's not modeled after Windows 7, but that's the closest comparison I can make to it. You have your desktop icons here. Down here you have a taskbar with like a start menu with your settings and installed applications categorized by type. You have your show desktop button. It comes pre-installed with Firefox. You have a terminal down here, if you so wish to use it, and your file explorer right here. And then over here on the right, we have our user with some options to log out, power off, and so on. We have our network. Since we're virtualizing, it is bridging the network connection with our host, so there's no need to fiddle with that. It's already good to go. We're connected to the internet. Your date and time with a calendar and your sound over here on the right. And so it's just, it's a very nice layout. It's very crisp, it's very clean, it's efficient, and I, I like it. This is one of the, this is one of my favorite Linux distributions right now. I, I'm also a huge fan of Intergos, uh, but I always tend to come home to Linux Mint. It's always been very stable, and I've never had any major issues with it. So. When you're done, when you're ready to power the system off, you just come up here to the X, click on power off the machine. You can kind of just put the machine to sleep if you so wish to. I usually just prefer to power them off for simplicity's sake. And then the next time you want to fire it up again, open up VirtualBox, you can highlight it and start the system and you'll be good to go. And if you have not installed it, you'll boot right back into the live ISO. If you do install it onto the virtual hard disk, when you reboot into it, you'll boot into your same settings and everything. You can save your documents, you can save your pictures, none of that will go away. So, as you can see, it's very easy to virtualize. There are hundreds of reasons and applications for why you would want to virtualize. So I highly encourage that you go out and try this for yourself see how easy it is. Um, it's a great way to download different Linux distributions and give them a try. You can virtualize Windows. Um, it's actually a very easy process as, as well. You do the same thing. You take a Windows ISO and you run through the same setup. At this time it is possible to virtualize Mac OS X. However, it's very difficult to do so um, and it's not for beginners. I would not recommend it for beginners. Um, 
your best bet is to just stick with Linux and Windows for virtualizing. And like I said, it's a great way to kind of get your toes wet um, with different Linux distributions, kind of get a feel for them, see if you like one, if you don't like one. Um, if you decide you don't like a, a distro or if you want to delete a virtual machine, you can just right click and you can remove remove all the files, remove the hard drive, the virtual hard drive, um, and it's gone. So it's a great way to just play around with it and get a feel for it. So I highly encourage that you go out and you give this a try. And if you have any questions or if you come across any um, issues that you might have, feel free to leave a comment below or shoot me a message and I'll try to help you out as best as I can. So I wish you luck. I hope you have fun and thank you for watching.